Known as the Horse Cutter, this is one of those weapons that you would see in movies and video games, maybe even read about in textbooks, and you would absolutely love to own in real life, but you'd never actually find a way to buy it. Well, the great people at Karate Mark are doing their part to help change that, because in this episode of Weapon Logs, we're going to test out this awesome Pudao and show if it's actually worth all the hype. What's up guys, it's the only ninja wearing aviators and a superhero hat, and welcome to the Modern Ninja channel. If you're anything like me, then you have no idea what a Pudao is, and you're only halfway sure on how to spell it. But that name Horse Cutter really has piqued your interest. And who could blame you? That is an absolutely wild thought. Well, the Pudao, also known as the Podao, is a Chinese glaive with a cleaving blade that resembles the broadsword. It originated during the Song Dynasty, sometime between 960 and 1270. AD. Just like many other weapons of the time, it was a farming tool turned weapon, largely not considered to be a military grade weapon and used by small militias, bandits, and outlaws, and even rebels at the time. However, that definitely changed when the Chinese military realized what these had the ability to actually do, which is obviously how it got the name Horse Cutter. I may pronounce this wrong, but I'm going to do my best. General Yu Fei pioneered using to chop off the legs of heavily armored horses in battle. This made his men quite a problem for any attacking army of the time. After taking out the horse, they were able to use the hook on the back of the blade to use it and maneuver their opponents into the prime position to use this two-foot business end to, well, dispatch the enemy. I really love the history behind this weapon, which is why I think the design choice they went for is perfect. At 53 inches and just over five pounds, it definitely looks and feels like you could do some serious damage when holding and wielding this weapon. Even when just practicing with the weapon and never using it before, I could feel the absolute devastation this weapon could bring in the hands of an actual practitioner or trained warrior. And in my opinion, the unfinished and burnt wood handle and the charcoal finish on the blade makes it really stand out and look at like an ancient weapon to match its history. Don't get me wrong, the modern ninja obviously loves modern looking weapons, but who doesn't enjoy an ancient treasure like this one every now and then? Like it would look absolutely perfect mounted on the wall of any martial arts school or any training basement out there. But don't think it's merely a decorative weapon. Of course, it's gonna be a full tang blade. For those that don't know, this just means that the blade metal extends throughout the handle that will keep it um, much stronger and keep the blade from popping off the handle when you're in the midst of combat. Obviously, that wouldn't be the best in a combat situation, but it's also made out of 1045 carbon steel, and I realize that not everyone is quite the weapon and metal nut that I might be, so the long and short of that is that the blade has a couple different things. One, it's high strength and toughness, making it take impacts quite well. Like I dropped it multiple times in the making of this video on concrete, and this basically no dings or scratches. It's fairly easily sharpened by either over-the-counter sharpening tools or even if you really want to do it by your hand if you know what you're doing. This means that in that theoretical zombie apocalypse it will be easy to keep your zombie beheading tool uh, sharp and good for use. And the metal can also be easily weldable. This means you can add in any flare or special designs if there's any welder that wants to do a DIY project with this device. Now if you can't tell I really do like this weapon. I've been excited to play Fruit Ninja with it since I opened the box they shipped it to me with, but there's some things I would have done differently. The black nylon grip is really nice choice design-wise. It's using the Tsukamaki style of wrap that many historical katanas use as well, covering three separate portions of the handle, the top, the middle, and the base, along with the ring at the bottom of the handle as well. However, if you plan on using this actively, the grip is definitely not the most secure thing in the world. After just a couple minutes of testing it and spinning it around, the wrap started to un do itself in my hands and obviously for a decoration piece that doesn't really matter so there's not much to worry about but if you do plan on training with it at all you're gonna want to make sure you either re-glue and um, secure all the wraps that it comes with or just re-wrap it with whatever wrap you 
typically prefer. Because the last thing I want is for my weapon grip to fail me when I'm wielding such a heavy and dangerous weapon. That's a great way to lose a couple toes and I'm not trying to do that. The guard is also a little tight around the hand as well. It's honestly not really that big of an issue for me, but I have noticed that some of my martial arts friends with slightly bigger hands have the issue of being slightly encumbered and uh, limited by the rotation of the weapon. However, with all these drawbacks, I still love this guy and plan to do plenty of practice with it, but definitely with the sheath on. The imitation leather does a great job at both protecting the blade and protecting the mats of the school that I teach at. And to truly eliminate some of the bias I may have, let's talk to some of the martial artists in the community. This is a fascinating pudao. It's a little bit different than either the pudao or dadao that I use, but I definitely like it. I like the longer handle. I will say overall, um, some of the, uh, when we're using it, it's, it's kind of easy to come unraveled here, but that's a small thing and an easy thing to fix. Uh, for the balance, the weight, and the fact that it actually works. So, I like it. I'm Elise, and I'm one of Coach DJ's students. Now, when I was working with this, one thing that I did notice that I find super cool is that you could do some damage with the leather on or with the blade out. You could, whew, you can definitely do some uh, gruesome things with this. I really do like this weapon. I like the balance of it. Obviously, it's going to be a little bit heavier towards the weapon side, but that gives it the counterbalance that one might need for taking out the horse with his legs. And I love that the, the weapon feels heavy enough and sturdy enough that I can do that. Now I know what you came here to see. You want to see me absolutely obliterate some fruit. So let's go out and test this bad boy with some fruit ninja, but I have one thing to get off my chest. This isn't just a normal weapons log video. This was actually sent to me by Karate Mart for phase two of their contest to see who will get to host their show, Weapons Wednesday. So it'd be really cool if you guys could tune into their channel and help vote for me. Now that that's off my chest, let's play some Fruit Ninja. Starting off with my first swing, it's pretty solid, but I don't have the blade alignment quite right on my first try, so it ends up just knocking the pumpkin off the stand. <laughs> and then it's Bobby's first swing. His first swing is much better than mine simply because he has actual training with this weapon unlike I do. And so his first swing does cut a chunk off just like I, just like mine did as you see in this picture here. Then Bobby really comes into his own and gives it his second swing and truly cuts it clean in half as you see in the video right here because he's able to get the li alignment correctly. And so I give it my go, Bobby lights it, and I swing cutting it almost in half. So I ended up cutting it like it was a clean cut, but I just didn't reach far enough in. So we're gonna try again. And so I take one more chance out and completely finish it by cutting the pumpkin clean in yeah, half. Yeah, and now we're we'll leave it. with a bunch of pumpkin bits on the ground. And now we have a super cut of all the cool different cuts that we did with flying fruit in the air. Perfectly in half. It's like he's a ninja. Almost a ninja, a modern ninja. Now I know what you're thinking. DJ, I want to play Fruit Ninja too. How do I get one? And I got you guys. Just click the Karate Mart link down in the bio below and get one for yourself. And like I said earlier, I'd really appreciate you going to check out their YouTube channel to vote for me. But until next time, my name's DJ Moore. This is the Modern Ninja. And I'm out. If you like this video, check out this one about the Galaxy Butter Knife or this other one you do think you'll like as well. Either way, I'll see you guys in the next one. I'm on that Bruce Lee flow like water, state of mind. Got me going farther than I ever thought I could have been. Gotta grab a sheet of paper as you know I got the pin. Anybody want to smoke your whole career be looking grim. Out here flashing chains while your boy been in the gym. Watch me spitting flames while the frogs try to...